All right. Well, welcome back to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. I'm Andrew, and I'm joined by members of the band Sun Below. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Good to have you. Thanks yeah, thanks a lot for having us. Of course. Of course. So um, getting down to business, the uh, you have a, a split with Earth Altar called uh, Inter Terra Solis that's going to be released uh, September 15th. And I know right now there's a single, I believe, available, Methuselah. That's not the full title, but you'll have to forgive me. I've blanked on the full title. Yeah, it's uh, Methuselah Star. That's right, Methuselah Star, yes. I was actually just listening to uh, Gravity Tide. I think that's my favorite track that's uh, that's on the split so far. Um, Sweet, thank you. Nice, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> cool, yeah. Well, it's, it's really, I think... Um, my the the best description that I read, Sun Below is a heavy stoner doom power trio playing a signature brand of self described sativa rock, which I thought was really a, you know I was trying to think about how do I describe what the music is, and then that was like the perfect description. So, nice. Well, I'm glad that we fit our own self described <laughs> description that it actually brought that out in somebody. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was one of those things where, you know, like your Geiger counter goes off, like the metal detector rings, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's the perfect description. Perfect, so, yeah. <laughs> so, well, whether or not it's self, self uh, uh, appointed or not, it's uh, it works. Well, in the world of, of metal and everything, where there's so many subgenres and all that, we didn't really see ourselves as like a, a true stoner metal, stoner rock. We kind of saw it as somewhere in the middle. And uh, sativa rock happened to be the, the word we went with. <laughs> it's a great, yeah, it's a great, I mean, I personally always say the only reason why half of these uh, subgenres exist is to give people something to argue about. Um, yeah, pretty much. I don't know if we've ever gotten into any arguments yet with it, but maybe we should start a few. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's, it, 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 you can, you certainly can. I mean, I think people, there may be people out there who have, uh, difficulty accepting sativa rock as the descriptor, but that's their problem. <laughs> well, yeah, that let's, we'll leave it for them to debate on the message boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can get mad when we start writing our own reviews for our music. <laughs> 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 um, okay, well, so uh, if sativa, I mean, I, obviously, I want to talk more to you than just sativa rock, you know, leaving that as the, the only thing we discuss. So, um, are you, I know you're all, are you all in Toronto, Ontario? Actually, none of us are in Toronto. None of you. <laughs> yeah. We either usually get described as a Toronto band or a Hamilton band and none of us live in either of those two cities specifically. <laughs> okay. So you should let Bandcamp know because the band is hailed as being from Toronto, Ontario on Bandcamp. That's where I got my information. So Right. Which I I'm, guess is kind of a good midpoint for us just because um I live out like further east in Oshawa area and then Liam and Will live in Oakville, Burlington area. So those are kind of the two big cities that we're kind of gravitating around. Gotcha. Well my guess is it, originally I'm from New York City. Um, but there's a you know a lot of people from, you know the, like Westchester or stuff like that. So it's easier for them just to say New York City. So my guess is it's probably easier for you to say we're from Toronto rather than we're from, you know near Hamilton, Oshawa, um, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> the official term is the Greater Toronto Area, but saying right. we're from Toronto is just way easier. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, that's a uh, yeah. No, it was a, it. it, it it's always a pleasant surprise for me um, when I listen to music that I also really like personally. You know, sometimes people, like I will listen to an album um, and then have people on the show, but I'm not so invested in it. But what was really cool is I really dug, you know, whether you want to call it sativa rock or stoner metal or, or, or elements of doom, it's a really cool psychedelic feel to it. So, Thank yeah. yeah, thanks. We appreciate that. Yeah, I would I would say it's always nice to meet bands that I feel can take the torch 
from bands that I used to listen to who are no longer making music. Um, so I feel like you could try, you know, again, this will be where the message boards light up with arguments where I'll be like, you could take, um, you know, like the torch from Sir Lord Baltimore and then have you guys, you know, obviously that may not be the best fit, but the, the you know, the lineage continues. So, so that's what, so you're all not in the same, you're in the greater Toronto area. Um, yeah. How does that work with rehearsals? And I mean, is it easy to sort of coordinate schedules? Uh, the cor- the coordinating is a little tough sometimes, <laughs> but um, we, we work it out. Um, we have a rehearsal place in uh, Toronto that we all meet up with. So it's kind of like meeting in the middle sort of thing. Gotcha. And the scheduling is tough too, because Liam and I play in another band together called the Electric Cactus. And then I also have a third band called Tumble that I also play in. So we're, we're juggling work schedules, rehearsal schedules, and it, it gets tough at times, but we still manage to somehow meet up once a week. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's, it was the really interesting thing for me in the post COVID world to sort of see how everyone was making things work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really, even though you think sometimes when you think of a band, the first thing you think of is not, that they're juggling day jobs necessarily, but few people I think think, oh, they are also play in other bands, um, and then that's something you need to figure out as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how does the the writing process and the the how does the process work with the three of you? Do you guys all add stuff um, collectively and then sort of vote on it, work on it? Yeah, I'm I think always- it's a pretty organic. Uh, kind of working uh, method that we have, like somebody might come in with, you know, a couple of riffs or a few ideas, and then we kind of get into the, and start jamming it out and then start picking away at, you know, the arrangements and all, maybe we extend this for, you know, a couple more times. Maybe we do a little variation here or there. Some songs come in like, you know, with a little bit more of an idea, you know, here's a rough structure and you're just doing a little bit of edits, but then there's other times where it's, you might have an idea of doing a two or three minute, you know, song or interlude like the case on the split and then it ends up you know you get a version of it that's seven and a half minutes long and that you could even maybe extend it when you play it live even further than that so gotcha yeah i'm I'm always curious you know because it's never the same formula for every you know for every group there's always nuances to it um what are you hoping people will come away with when they listen to this uh album Less money in their pockets. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think even just you know, if you followed us from kind of you know, we've had a few EPs that we've released. We had a full length album in 2021. Just kind of you know, continuing to see that progression, and I think also kind of taking away. I hope part of it is that the other band on the split, Earth Alter. I hope that what they take away is kind of. You know, you have the two bands on each respective side, but I hope that there's kind of a total vibe that people are taking in from the whole split where, you know, it's a very complementary nature, um, you know, our two styles, even though we're a little bit, you know, we have our individual traits and and stuff, but I think that there's kind of a cohesive feel to the whole vibe of the album. Yeah, we worked, uh, got, I don't know, for the better part of a year on uh, just establishing context between the two bands and the music and the the uh the ideas behind them and then the lore and everything so obviously nobody's gonna go through and uh, read the paragraphs and paragraphs uh, that us and earth alter have written to each other uh, about uh, just like messages and ideas behind the songs but i, I think you know I, I think it comes through in the album yeah i so i would say well the album Interterra Solis with Earth Altar and Sun Below the Split will be available on uh, September 15th, but you can listen to some of the tracks now, and it's available for pre-order. And like a good book, it should be listened to each track in order, and then you can find the nuances and the subtext and the messages, uh, and hopefully there will be less money in people's pockets <laughs> as they go for it, so... Show me the dough. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and also I was curious where the name of the band came from or if there was something there, uh, any lore or, or mythology behind that. Because it, it was, I'm sorry, go on. 
Oh, no. Um, I think that the origins of it was our um, a former member of the band, our uh, first bass player, he kind of had an idea and it was kind of tied in with, um, I, I guess, almost like like the moon above, sun below sort of a thing. There was kind of an occultist twist to it. There's, I think, some further lore that I haven't really even dove in that that further, but we just thought it was a, a cool name. And we've kind of used the sun below imagery in a lot of the, you know, the album cover for our first album. And then also on the split, there's kind of, you know, the, the red giant sun that's kind of on both sides of this cover art on this record. So, um, yeah, it's, it doesn't have a specific story, but there's been a lot of sun related um, themes within a lot of the songs we've had of sun burning out and some time travel shenanigans and some fun stuff there. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, I was just, it, it is a good, I mean, it is, it's one of those band names that works really well, just what it is. And then I was curious to, as to whether or not there was more to it, um, which is why part of why it's such a good name, because it gets you thinking. Um, yeah. It leaves some mystery there. <laughs> yeah. And there doesn't have to be anything greater than just the fact that it's a, a an interesting thought provoking name. Um, yeah. I was, yeah, just personally, I've kind of described it too as like the, the nicest part of hell. So, uh, yes. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say that is also a great, uh, you know, I think that was probably Dante's uh, first draft was called Sun Below. You know, Dante's Sun Below doesn't quite have the same punch to it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. So people should check out some of the EPs you've had uh, out already. The new album, The Split, comes out in September. Um, are you going to be playing a gig or, or are you already playing? Are you planning on uh, playing any gigs in the next couple of months? Yeah, so we've got um, we've got the release show that's happening in Toronto on September 15th at Bar Orwell. Um, we're going to be playing with our friends in Old Time Moonshine, uh, Muffler Crunch and Cannabis. And then the following week, we're going out to... Uh, Quebec and uh, doing one day in Ottawa. And so we're kind of meeting Earth Altar in the middle and we're playing uh, on the 21st at Turbo House in Montreal. Um, and then we're playing uh, Scanner Bistro um, in Quebec City on the Friday. And then the Saturday, um, I'm going to mess up the pronunciation of it, but it's a brewery, um, Les Beers Philophice. I'm sure I've butchered that completely, but. <laughs> <laughs> That, I, I, when I had a previous show that I used to do called A Fistful of Faceful, um, and I, <laughs> I would find, you know, originally it started, I uh, taught in Hong Kong, and I did a show with a British, a very meek British fellow, and my whole goal was to try to introduce him to metal. He was like a, Brit, a fan of Britpop, um, and we would go all over the, but I would, every episode, I felt it wouldn't have been a good episode if I didn't mispronounce the band's name somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize to that brewery that we're playing. No, 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 I'll good. get the pronunciation right. <laughs> it's all good. You can blame it on me. It's, it's part of the charm of the show. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's cool. So you've got the, um, the split, some EPs, you've got shows coming up. That's, that's really great. And if people want to find you, um, it's just social media. Look for Sun Below. Um, yep, cool. we're Sun Below Band on Instagram. Uh, yeah, you can find our band camp. Our link tree have recently been uh, updating that, so it's got links to um, basically all the upcoming shows, the events, uh, the split pre-order. Um, it's got some interviews that we've done recently. Um, also a live set we did at Ryefield Studios, so there's lots of new stuff on there to check out. Yeah, and I would I would urge you out there if you're into this type of music, don't sleep on some below. Get their previous EPs, pre-order this split when you get the chance. I was a huge fan of all three tracks, especially Gravity Tide. That was the one that did it for me. But um, yeah, I will be this. This is an album I will have in my rotation for a while, um, and I urge you to get out there and listen to it as soon as you can. Um, Obviously, this album is going to be released next month, but is there? are you working on new material as well? We also, uh, during the recording sessions for um, our side of Interterra Solus, we recorded um, quite a bit of other material at that time too. So we just kind of have that in our back pocket and just kind of seeing, you know, once we kind of get through September and the release, maybe kind of turn our minds to how that could 
um, present itself. But uh, yeah, we've got some stuff in the back pocket for sure. Cool. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to revisiting uh, this split. I'm glad there's new music coming out, and I'll have to do a deep dive into the catalog, um, which I have yet to do. But uh, I wish you guys all the best of luck. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. And uh, good luck with uh, Interterra Solis and everything else. And uh, consider me on the bandwagon. So I, I look forward to... Uh, I look forward to uh, hearing more uh, more good news. But awesome. uh, thanks thank for you. having us. Yeah, of course, my yeah, pleasure. Thanks so much, Andrew. Thanks, yeah. Be well. Good luck. Speak soon. Yeah. Sure. Sounds good. Take care. Bye.